Hello, this is Altan Lahoski from Lombic Technologies Limited. This is a tutorial for Orchard Dojo about how to run the Orchard CMS with IIS and the proper SQL server on your development machine. We will start by installing WebMatrix. WebMatrix, uh, if you doesn't happen to know, is a nice little tool aiding web development and even if you are a hardcore developer it's nice to use WebMatrix to browse an SQLC database because its uh, database browser is quite nice and easy to use if you have a small data set and this is something you typically have on your development orchard instance. So let's install WebMatrix. By the way it will also install Web Platform Installer, the tool we will use to install other tools during this tutorial and it will install uh, IAS Express, so the web server we will use to run Orchard and many dependencies, so to start with web matrix is very convenient. And now everything is loaded, so here is the web matrix install screen inside web platform installer, so let's install. As you can see it will install quite a few dependencies we will need uh, most of them, so really this is a good way to start. Now as you can see my virtual machine I have set up here is so incredibly fast that the installer has already completed, so that's great. But we are not finished yet. We have now installed an IIS Express together with WebMatrix but we need something to handle and to edit the configuration of that IIS we have running here. And we will need a tool, tool for that. And that tool is called IIS Manager or precisely IIS Manager from Remote Administration. So let's install that. And uh, we will see what IIS Manager will provide for us. And this is already done, so great. Let's take a look at IS Manager. IS Manager will provide us with some configuration tools for our local IIS. As you can see, this is this machine, it's listed here, is the <clears throat> only server I have a connection saved in this IS manager and as you can see it's pretty empty also there is only one site the default website this default website is just a welcome splash screen that comes with IS bundle so there's pretty much nothing in this IIS yet we have to install some other components as well we will need ASP.NET of course, because Orchard is an ASP.NET application, so we will need it. And we will need not just ASP.NET, but ASP.NET 405 or the latest version you um, you, can, you have to you have access to at the time you are watching this video. Now, as you can see, I've searched for ASP.NET 405, but it's not listed here. Now, the case is that this is a Windows 7 machine, so we don't have .NET 405 installed yet. So we have to install that first. I will just go on and install the .NET framework first. And after that, we should then be able to install ASP.NET 405 as well. <coughs> and convenient, conveniently, we need to a restart the system, so I will just do that as well. Don't be afraid if you already have uh, .NET 4 or 5 installed or even you own a Windows 8 machine, so you don't need to install .NET 4 or 5. That's not an issue. I'm just finishing up the installation of .NET 4 or 5, so please stand by for a little more. Okay, so after several restarts, we are back to our web platform installer. Now, previously I've said that 
<clears throat> that we should install ASP.NET 4.5 uh, but it turns out there is no ASP.NET 4.5 uh, listed in my web platform installer uh, that's actually quite strange because uh, on another machine I have that but, um, but it seems it will work without that extension here for some reason um, anyway, if you are installing uh, a Windows Server uh, operating system and and you add roles to that server, you will definitely uh, see and will need the ASP.NET 4.5 role there. Uh, anyways, we will need some other components. HTTP errors is needed for us. It's already installed. I guess it was installed with uh, WebMatrix. And we will need, or uh, possibly, the URL rewrite. To uh, you can use URL rewrite to to add URL rewrite surprisingly uh, rules to your web config files. So if you use URL rewrites <coughs> on your sites and you want to test them locally by modifying the web.config file of your Orchard instance. You should definitely install your uh, URL rewrite too. So that was installed. So now we can go back to IS and add our Orchard website. Here I have an Orchard source. This is the full source. It's a uh, 1.6, by the way, because this is the most recent source at the time released. But of course. Uh, uh, the technique will be the same with later Orchard versions as well. So let's go back to IS Manager and we will add our Orchard website. As you may know, the Orchard solution has uh, many folders, many, many folders, but there is one, Orchard.web, that's the web project. You have to add this web project because this is the real web application behind Orchard you have to add this web project to IIS so we will now, now go to IIS manager and add this web project as our website so we were here before as you now see there are several other components installed in our IIS so this should be sufficient we will now go to sites and add a new website. You can give the site a name, so let's call it Orchard Test. An application pool will be created for, for this website automatically if you don't, uh, don't select otherwise. I would advise you to create an application pool for each of the websites you are testing locally. It's just more convenient this way. You won't uh, experience any performance issues or any issues at all. Now, under physical path, let's go to our orchard. So it's on the desktop. And under source, we select orchard.web. All right. Now we can add a binding. The binding is basically the configuration that tells IIS what it should listen to when, when it should uh, open up this website. So you can specify a host name here and after you start the website this Orchard instance will be accessible from under that host name on your local machine. Now there is a neat trick that you can use and it doesn't need any other sort of configura configuration like editing the host file of your system and uh, for that we will use a seemingly local seemingly global URL that is uh, really a local one and that URL is like the following it's a uh, kind of localhost but it looks like a real domain anyway it looks back loops back to our localhost so if I write orchard test here we will be able to access this website from under this URL in any browser without any further configuration. So let's hit OK. 
now our website is added. Uh, let's do one final configuration before we try out this website. Let's go under application pools and you can see that this Orchard test website was created for some reason with uh, .NET Framework 2.0, though that's wrong. I will just uh, reset this to the latest framework version. In, as manage pipeline mode, integrate it should be selected. This is important. And one final note here. You can see there is this identity column. Basically, this tells us how, this, how the applications in this application pool are run regarding the Windows user. Now, we will reset this to be our own user. Later, with uh, SQL Server, we will see why this is important. So I'm just going here and we will use a custom account. It will be my user account. So I will just give the username and password here. Oops. Let's try again. Oops. My password is password. So you could probably have guessed that. And of course I have problems with my existence. That's working now. All right, so everything's okay. And now let's uh, check out our website. So let's go to the browser and open our website up. Now the initial load time will be a bit long, but after a while you should be able to see the setup screen what uh, is kind of lame on my machine for some reason because the CSS and JavaScript files are not loaded. Uh, for some strange reason on this on this machine it is uh, this way but just on the first time. <laughs> so let's uh, don't get intimated, intimated by this and let's set up our Orchard website, admin password, and for now, we will use an SQLC database. Everything else can be the default. So let's wait for our nice Orchard setup. And it indeed works. Here we have our web Orchard website. It responds, so everything is great. Now, this is really great, but we want a full SQL server. So we will just uh, go back and install a real SQL server on our machine. I will just close this and uh, I will now recycle the application pool of our Orchard test website so I can remove the app data folder. The app data folder contains among others the SQLC database but we won't need that because we are now installing the, the SQL server. So this was just a small cleanup. Now there is a, a download package for for everything you will need for S SQL development, and that is called SQL Express 2012 or anything else. Probably there will be a 2013 as well. And advanced tools. Um, this should be it. Yeah, it definitely looks like that. We will now download it. You can select uh, an addition here to download. I would advise you to to download the most complete package. And for for 64-bit systems, this is this one. So this, uh, this includes basically everything, including SQL, man SQL Server Management Studio that you will need for Orchard development. So let's download that. All right. The download is done, of course, in an instant. So let's start the setup. It will take a while, so 
make sure to prepare some hot coffee or hot chocolate um, by the end of the setup it won't be hot anymore but um, it will probably make it more enjoyable after a while you will see this screen so in the end we can start with the actual installation in sims select new sql server standalone installation because this is what we want to do now comes the usual installer stuff so let's accept everything and anything yes please also update my sql server instance and begin with the setup okay so here we are basically here the defaults are okay unless you want to do if you want to use local db this is not necessary for orchard development but of course you can opt with a local db instance of uh, instead of a standard database but we will just leave it uh, like this for now okay so basically here you can leave everything on the default it doesn't really matter if you don't have multiple instances of sql uh, of an sql server uh, uh, instance on your machine so that will just be sufficient and we are waiting again and again this is also good on the default all the necessary services are running or rather will start automatically here you can <coughs> here you can choose to use uh, either windows authentication mode for sql server or mix mode where not only windows authentication but sql server authentication is available <coughs> well it really depends on what you want to do if you could never know so let's um, rather select this uh, mixed mode but you can change this later on so don't be afraid if you uh, need to use sql server authentication later but have chosen windows authentication here but if you are installing this now let's choose mixed mode well uh, since i wanted to use password again that of course is uh, a very bad choice if, if you are trying this and not just for a test i got a validation error all right reporting services can be installed and configured okay let's send reports as well and wait again all right i can't believe this installation finally finished so as you can see everything is a great success so we are done with installing sql server now almost before we can start with orchard let's do two things first let's uh, let's enable tcp ip connections because that's uh, that's not enabled by default for S for our sql server so let's go to sql server configuration manager in uh, sql server configuration manager you can really configure everything that's global to uh, your sql server instances now under under sql server network configuration you will see uh, a, a menu item with protocols for your insert sql server instance name here so sql express uh, here and here you can see which type of connection your your sql express instance uh, accepts now we will need tcp tcp ip for for our orchard instance to work so let's select yes here all right so we will need to restart the service the sql express service luckily we have this sql server services uh, menu item here as you can see we have uh, quite a few services running here is our sql server uh, service this is the actual sql server 
So let's restart it. After it is restarted, we will be able to use everything and run Orchard. But before uh, before we run Orchard, let's uh, quickly discover our SQL Server. And we will use SQL Server Server Management Management uh, Studio here. Yeah, it's the new edition. So let's look at it. Interestingly, it's SQL Server 2012, powered by Visual Studio, but it looks like Visual Studio 2010. I guess there was some interesting design decision behind that. But uh, after it loads, we will be able to see, uh, we will be able to connect to our local SQL server. All right, we can either connect by by the full name of our server instance, or if we have only one instance running, what is the case now? We can just use localhost. All right. Oh yeah. So this uh, we could use localhost if uh, if we have uh, chosen the default instance name when installing. We have instead chosen the full name SQL Express, so we have to use this alias here. Uh, we have configured Windows Authentication as well, so we can use Windows Authentication. And now this should work. Yeah, indeed. Here we have our SQL Server instance. We should have some built-in databases, yes. And to run our Orchard instance, we need to create an SQL database. Uh, and Orchard will use that SQL database. So let's go here, right-click, New Database. All right, let's call that Orchard test as well. Uh, all the defaults will be enough for us for now. All right, and now let's go back to our IS manager and open up our Orchard test website. Of course, you don't necessarily need to go to IS manager to open up the website. If, uh, if you just visit this URL anytime, uh, IAS is started and it should start uh, with um, Windows Start or, or rather you should be able to start IAS by opening this URL uh, without any other configuration so uh, you just you can just visit this URL and open up your website so let's see the setup screen again because we should be uh, should be able to see that soon all right, so let's do again our test, admin password, password again. But now we won't use the, uh, the built-in storage with our uh, basic SQL Server compact database, but rather a real database. Uh, we need a connection string for us. I, have, I just happen to have one in the clipboard. Um, this is the familiar SQL connection string you may have used in other .NET applications. Well, the data source, the first parameter for the data source is the, uh, is the address where you can access the database. Now, localhost local host won't work here. So let's just copy this here. So we will use the full name here. Initial catalog, we should specify the database name here. So this is Orchard test. So let's use the same. Oops, a random caps lock. And you see we have integrated security set uh, as true here. Do you remember that in IS Manager, when we set up our website, we also set that for our Orchard test application pool that's running our Orchard test website we specified the identity to be the to be my user now since this is configured this way we can use integrated security but basically means that um, that the, the connection to the sql server we use 
this uh, Windows user. If we, if you would have left this on the default setting, uh, that would need that uh, we should set up a proper SQL Server user and specify its credentials here in the connection string. For local testing, for data development, this uh, this is uh, using integrated security is simply uh, more simple. So I would advise you to use that. Uh, you could specify a database table prefix for uh, for the orchard tables, of course. So this is the usual orchard setup. And after our recipe is cooked, you should be able to see our beautiful new local orchard test website running from our SQL Server database. So let's see what happens. And there it is. Beautiful. Uh, let's go back to SQL Server Manager just to quickly check what we have done. And indeed, here is our Orchard Test database and you see that we have all the tables that are created by the default uh, installation for Orchard. We have all the tables here, so everything has works. Now that was how to set up Orchard locally with an IIS Express and an SQL Express uh, uh, instance. So that should uh, really give you an idea how to uh, start developing with IS and SQL Server locally. It's uh, pretty straightforward for now. So our website runs. If you open the solution in Visual Studio, you should be able to just modify the source. And because of dynamic compilation, if you modify the source, you should be able to see the changes right after a reload in the browser. Uh, of course, you can also attach a debugger, but um, in the notes for this video, everything is uh, is is uh, simply explained with some links included. So you should be uh, you should know uh, how to quickly jump uh, jump uh, off from this uh, this start. So thank you for watching. Uh, that was it.